Hi everyone, and have I got a very important question to ask all of you. Are you ready? No, I said, are you ready? That's right everyone, the big announcement that was made this Monday just gone, that D-Generation X will officially be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Triple H, Shawn Michaels, X-Pac, Road Dogg, Billy Gunn and China will be inducted as a group. Now, there have been some mixed feelings about DX going into the Hall of Fame. Some people have said that, oh, they're not going to induct China on her own. This is the only way she'll get in. Um, some people have said all sorts of things. Now, here's where things get a little bit difficult if you will. Triple H said a couple years back on Stone Cold's podcast that if China was to go in to the Hall of Fame, he was worried that his children would look her up on Google and they would see her porn stuff. Now, I've personally found that quite laughable and maybe a bit hypocritical because... Sonny's in the Hall of Fame, and she's done porn, so I don't really see why that should make any difference with someone like China. The difference between Sonny and China, China played a big role in the women's division. She made a huge impact for all female wrestlers. I consider her to be the measuring stick for all female wrestlers that have come in and cut and gone through the company and there's no denying that China played a huge role in the success of DX there's just no denying that and I personally think it would have been really bad if DX were inducted and they just left China out that would have been just criminal so I think it's a good thing that she's getting inducted as part of DX. I'm hoping that DX will mention her in their, their Hall of Fame inductee speech. And, you know, I don't just want it to be they just mention her a little bit and Triple H just waffles for most of the evening. I really want them to acknowledge what China did for the group and what she done for business. And... There's another thing as well that I want to mention. We all know that DX helped make Triple H into a huge star. And they achieved their greatest success when he was the leader when he took over from Shawn Michaels. But there is no denying that. We know this. Hardcore fans know this. I know this. Shawn Michaels was really the guy that started all this. And I want to hear what Shawn Michaels has got to say about all of this because it, it makes perfect sense. I mean, he's he was the man. No, no bones about it. He was the man that built all this. So I'd love to hear what he's got to say. I would also love to hear what the New Age Outlaws have to say. And I'd like to hear a bit about X-Pac, providing he's not all off his face and coked up and if X-Pac's cleaned up for that night then I'd love to hear what Sean Waltzman has to say because he played a he played a big part in it too they everybody did really it was, it was one of those groups where everybody in the group was over it wasn't just about one guy everybody had a role and everyone just played it so perfectly and done such a an amazing job. It, it truly was a team effort. I still remember when DX first started, I think was 21 and a half years ago, almost 22 years ago. I think it was August of 1997. Basically what happened was, and I think I've still got this on DVD somewhere. I think I do. It was Shawn Michaels versus Mankind on Raw. It was a rematch from their classic In Your House Mind Games match. It was just a normal match on Raw. 
I believe it was, I think it was a no-holds-barred match. I think it was. And Shawn Michaels and Mankind were having a good match. And Triple H, who at the time was called Hunter Hearst Helmsley, he was in this aristocratic blue blood sort of gimmick. And China was his bodyguard. And he came out and um, Ravishing Rick Rude came out as well. And he was the mystery insurance policy. There was stories going around the whole night. Who's this mysterious insurance policy that Shawn Michaels has? And basically Hunter, Rick and China helped Shawn, um, Shawn Michaels get the win. Uh, because I think Hunter was involved in a feud with Mankind. He beat him in the finals of the King of the Ring, which was a good match. And they had another good match at the following pay-per-view, Canadian Stampede, which was quite good. And they had another match coming up at SummerSlam, which was a steel cage match. So Hunter helped Sean beat Mick Foley, aka Mankind. And you could kind of see that something was was going on with the two of them. But it wasn't until after SummerSlam when Mankind teamed up with The Undertaker and they both faced Hunter and Sean. That, for me, was the moment DX was truly born. China came out and Rick Rude came out. Um, Sean Michaels hit The Undertaker over the head with a steel chair, busting him wide open. And that was really the moment D-Generation X was truly born. But they didn't get their name till I think a couple months after. It was after Bad Blood. Bret Hart came out and blasted the two of them, calling him, "Oh, you're nothing but a bunch of degenerates." And they kind of just took the name, spun it around, and turned it into Degeneration X. I remember um, that great promo Shawn Michaels cut that night. He said that. Oh, you think we're a bunch of degenerates? He goes, well, if that's what we are, then we are Degeneration X. Triple H, HBK, China, Ravishing Rick, we are Degeneration X. You make the rules, and we will break them. Yeah. So uh, that's really how that whole DX thing started. But um, I would have to say... And I think a lot of people will agree with this. I think DX hit its real peak when Shawn Michaels broke his back and had to leave for four years. He took a hiatus and he left for four years. Triple H took over the leadership role of the group and he brought in x Pack and the New Age Outlaws. That, for me, is when DX was truly, officially hit its peak. They were the group that the fans loved to cheer. Even though they were supposed to be heels. The fans just loved them. I loved them too. I, I thought they were so cool. I, I found them really funny. I personally thought they were better than the NWO. I mean, NWO, by that point... I, I, NWO was just at the point of overkill, if you will. They had too many members. There was like over 20 plus members. But the thing that I liked about DX, which I think was the key to their success, was they kept it small. They didn't have too many members. I think they would either have two people, they would have three people, four people. The max they would have is five people. And I think that's what made it work. It wasn't overcrowded. Everybody had their role, like I said earlier. And yeah, it, it, that was it, really. And uh, the second incarnation of DX was so over. I mean, they were one of the hottest acts in the company, and they were up there with Stone Cold and Vince McMahon in terms of can't miss TV. And I think the second incarnation was a lot more outrageous than the first one. The first one, they were just a bunch of idiots but with the second DX they were but when things got serious they they kicked ass and that's what I liked about the second DX I remember they drove a tank 
to WCW. They tried to break into WCW and declared war on Nitro. DX were a big part of the Monday Night's War. Stone Cold and Vince McMahon's feud ultimately helped the company win the war, but I think DX played their big part as well. I mean, they they were just doing some crazy, crazy shit every week. I also remember um, probably the best thing they ever did, and it's one that still gets talked about today, was the parody that they did of The Nation. Everyone dressed up as The Nation. Uh, Triple H dressed up as The Rock, or as he called it, The Croc. X Pac dressed up as Mark Henry. Mia Zark. <laughs> and um, Billy Gunn and Road Dog were like D'Lo Brown and the, the Godfather. And I remember they brought in Jason Sensation uh, to dress up as Owen Hart. And I just found it so entertaining. It was so funny because I don't think anyone in WWE was doing that at the time, dressing up as another wrestler and taking the piss out of them, if you will. And they were just so funny. And they had a great rivalry with the nation. They had a great, great rivalry with the nation. And, you know, it is probably one of my favourite faction versus faction gang warfare feuds that I, I enjoyed. It was it was a lot of fun. And um yeah, for about one full year, the night after WrestleMania fourteen, all the way up to WrestleMania fifteen, they were just so over. And uh DX came to an end when China left to join Vince McMahon's corporation and Triple H left shortly after and began his journey to becoming the man that we would know now. He became the game, and he became the biggest heel, and probably the greatest heel in the company. And uh, DX did get back together after Triple H's heel turn, but as the four of them, I don't really think DX was quite the same. For starters, he didn't have China, so that was that. And DX, when they got back together in the second half of '99. They were just kind of more like hired thugs for Triple H, just doing his bidding. And that's not really what they were originally. It went from being a team to just being Triple H and DX, as opposed to just DX. It just became about Triple H. And shortly after that, um, they, they fell apart completely. Uh, Shawn Michaels returned and they teased a DX reunion in 2002 uh, Hunter turned on him and they began probably one of the greatest rivalries in the history of the business before reuniting in 2006 as the two of them when the two of them got back together it was fun don't get me wrong it was it was great but I didn't think it was the same as the original for starters obviously Shawn Michaels is married He's born again. Still enjoyed it, you know, being a big fan of DX, but nothing I don't think will ever be as good as the 1997 to 99 run. I mean, that that run was just, and um, that's involving both the Shawn Michaels led group and the Triple H led group, and that entire run from 1997 to 99 was was fantastic. The 2000 run, not so much. They were kind of a shell of what they were, what they used to be. But their best stuff was definitely the late 90s was this their best stuff. So um, there you have it, guys. DX officially going to the Hall of Fame. And it's I'm, I'm just happy China's going. And I'm hoping, like I said earlier, that China will get her due and going on her own as a solo wrestler and um, it's been a long time coming you know it's about time and one more thing I do want to mention is I would like to dedicate this video to my very good friend slash brother Armour who is no longer with us as I know he would have been so happy that his boys are finally getting inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame 
Arma was a big fan of DX growing up and we used to watch uh, WWF Raw every single week and he loved these guys so much, especially the original version with uh, Shawn Michaels, Triple H and China. That was his favourite incarnation of all time. So I know if he was here, he'd have been really, really happy about this news. And um, yeah, Armour, your boys finally got in at last. So thanks for listening, everyone. Leave your comments uh, down below. And one last thing I would like to say is if you're not down with D-Generation X going into the WWE Hall of Fame, then I've got two words for you.